Hey guys, it's Alexis here on Lexis Lingo, and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, thank you for joining me. So today's video, as you can tell by the title, is going to be kind of a horror stories, like dating experiences. And you know, I was thinking about it and I was like, you know, I really don't think I have that many. But then the more I started thinking about it and the more I started writing down bad experiences, the more that came to me. My relationships and everything have been just a roller coaster, like insane. Oh my goodness, I cannot even like express to you, especially this one story which I will not start out with that story because that story is like the big juicy one where you're just like left like pick your jaw up off the ground because it's it, it's rough get my cute little pillow in here so, the first story I'm going to be starting with is, do you guys know there's always that guy that you feel like they're trying to be just your friend, but at the same time you're not really positive? Then you're hanging out with them and it just reaches this point where you're like, they're trying to get down and dirty. They ain't trying to be your friend, honey. They trying to, you know, slide in there. Well, I've had that happen to me many, many times, and I am one of those people where if someone goes to kiss me, I kiss them because I feel bad and I don't know how to reject them and say no, unless, like, I'm in a relationship, obviously, and then I'm like, whoa, whoa, I'm in a relationship, like, you know this, what are you thinking? But when I'm single, it is really hard for me to tell someone, like, I'm sorry, I'm just not interested in you. Like, I don't want to hurt their feelings. So, that was the case. I was actually pretty young at this time. I would say I was about 15. And this kid was probably 17 or 18. So, he was a few years older than me, you know. I felt cool hanging out with, like, the older, you know, popular guy. It wasn't anything like that. I just felt cool hanging out with him. I wasn't attracted to him at all. It was more of like, you know, he talked to me and I thought he was my friend, you know? So he invited me over to play video games with him. And I was like, yeah, totally, like, cool. I have a younger brother who is literally a gamer freak. He has every single game system, every single game you could ever think of like he has it so you know I'm familiar with games you know so I go over to his house I end up finding out that his parents and his little sister aren't there so it's literally just him and I and he picked me up in his car by the way at 15 years old like this guy is picking me up at my house like I don't know how my parents even let this happen I must have made up a lie so if you guys are watching this, sorry. Anyways, so he picks me up, you know, we're riding around. He's, you know, that like bad boy smoking cigarettes and you know, I just wasn't into him like that at all though. So we get to his house and his bed was a futon. So like one of those beds where you can fold it up into like a couch or fold it down into a bed. So it's folded up into a couch, you know, we're sitting there playing video games, going back and forth, having a good time, everything's good, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I notice he's like kind of getting closer, just kind of being a little more like touchy-feely, like brush his hand against my knee, like little things like that, and I start thinking in my head, oh no. No, 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 no. Like, this guy is not about to try to sleep, like, with a 15-year-old girl when he's, like, 17, 18. Like, no, honey, no. But, you know, at the time I didn't see it, I see it like that. But, like, now that I'm older, I'm like, that is disgusting. That is wrong. Like, 
be ashamed of yourself because, you know, age is just a number, but you better make sure it's legal. I'm 15. I'm literally a child still. You know, I'm sitting there and then it, that, and then that goes on to like their morals, like preying on like a poor 15 year old girl. Okay. So anyways, anyways, you know, we're playing and then all of a sudden I go to the bathroom. I'm like, oh, I gotta get use the bathroom. So I go to the bathroom, I come back and all of a sudden his futon is turned into a bed. I'm like, And so I just like nonchalantly sit on his bed with my feet hanging off like normal, like how we were just without my back resting on anything, obviously, because now it's a bed and I'm like, how am I going to get home? Like he drove me here. Not that I had a car anyways and could drive. I was 15, but I was like, how am I going to get home? Like, this is so awkward. What do I do? I'm in this really awkward situation. So then he's like, oh, I'm kind of tired of playing video games. You want to watch a movie? And I guess I was kind of naive in a way. And I was like, oh, sure, you know, what, what movie you want to watch? And I don't even remember what movie he popped in, but he popped in some movie. I'm still sitting up awkward as hell on his bed. Like with my feet dangling off, trying to like keep my butt as close to the edge of the bed as I possibly can. And he is like laying down, getting all comfortable, like spreading his arms out, waiting for me to come in so he can just like wrap me up. I'm like, uh, this is my bowl. Please do not come in my bowl. He gets up to go get a drink or something, and when he comes back in the room, turns off the lights and I'm like this is it like he's going for it. he is going for it he's going for it what do I do right now I I am nervous I am sweating from my palms like crazy my whole body drenched in sweat because I just get so nervous and I'm like what do I do? He ends up trying to like tickle me or something to get me to like lay down with him. So finally I'm in that awkward position. We're both laying down. He's got his arm around me and he's on the outside of the bed. I'm on the inside. Somehow I ended up on the inside of the bed after trying to keep my ass scooted on the edge. I don't even know how it happened. I'm on the inside of the bed. I'm like literally pencil like just straight body and he's just like arm around me like trying to cuddle me and everything and I'm just like pencil like no no like you are not getting a kiss from me you are not getting second base third base you're definitely not getting a home freaking run who do you think you are you invited me over here to play video games we started out on a freaking couch and now you have me watching a movie in the dark with you, with no parents home, no siblings home, laying in a freaking bed. It didn't help that he was not my type. Like, I just did not find him attractive at all. He was a really nice guy, yada yada. I just didn't find him attractive. I wasn't attracted to him. I wasn't attracted to his personality in that kind of way. It was just, it, it was horrible. It was horrible. It was horrible. So... To make it even more awkward, he keeps trying to tickle me as we lay down to get me to roll over and like put my head on his chest. And he's wearing a plain white t-shirt, okay? And all of a sudden I like see something on his shirt like right here. And I like try like brushing it off because I'm like, ew, what is that? And I like tried brushing it off and it wouldn't come off. It was a dried fucking booger. A dried, disgusting, huge, crusty booger stuck to his shirt and I tried swiping it away. It literally touched my hand and then he kept trying to roll me over with to like put my head on his chest where the booger was and I was like, like I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh my god, this is already a horrible situation but now it's even more horrible. He's trying to get me to lay my freaking head onto his dry, disgusting booger on his white t-shirt. I ended up, like, texting my mom and being like, 
you need to call me right now and be like, Alexis Taylor, you need to get your ass home right now. It's too late for you to be out. Now, I ended up getting out of that situation so smoothly. I was like, oh my god, my mom's freaking out. Like, I have to go home. Oh, thank god that booger never fucking touched me. Never touched my face. It touched my poor little hand. But never touched my face, never touched my hair. Like, and plus, what was he thinking? I was freaking 15 years old. I'm one to talk. Like, I have so many more story times coming up, you guys. You have no idea. I've always dated older guys, and I don't know what happened along the way, but, like, that was just, like, no. Just no. 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 So, that's only the first story, okay? The first horrible story. And that one was light. This second story, horrible. Absolutely horrible horrible. Okay, I was, I believe, 16. And we're going to make up this name for this guy and this girl. Um, there was this guy, his name was Sam, let's say. And then my best friend, let's say her name was Sarah. So me and Sarah were absolute best friends. Like we were inseparable. We literally did everything together. We shared clothes. We were just such good friends. We told each other everything. Like it was that one best friend, you know, that you have when you're a kid. So Sarah was a virgin and at the time I was not. This kid, Sam, I had dated him previously and me and him had had intercourse while we were dating. Come to find out he was dating another girl that went to our school. She was in his grade. He was, um, I believe two grades ahead of me, but he was dating another girl. He was both lying to us. So she thought they were exclusive and me and him, I thought me and him were exclusive. She found out about me, uh, literally made every single one of her friends hate me, even though I didn't know either. Like, we were both the victims in the situation. We just definitely didn't see it that way. We just saw it as, well, I'm gonna get him, and that's that. You know, just stupid, like, stupid things that, like, kids do that are so petty, and, like, you think about it when you're older, and it's like... If a guy cheats and he lies, why do you want him anyways? But anyways, back to the story. So I find out he's dating this girl. I actually end up getting jumped in school by this girl and a bunch of her friends. She ended up actually getting expelled from that school because she was such a troublemaker. And you know, me and her are friends. We're not friends, I guess, but we're acquaintances. Like, we have no beef against each other. Is beef even a term used nowadays? I have no idea what the lingo is anymore. But me and her have no more beef. Like, we're cool. Like, we've seen each other talk, laughed about it, kind of, you know. It's whatever. It's like dust under a rug. Nothing happened. So, me and her are okay now, but so obviously she hated me. Obviously, I hated her. She wasn't there anymore. And Sam, for months, was begging me, like, begging me, like, please forgive me, Alexis. Just give me a second chance. I promise, like, I, I will never do anything like that to you again. Like, what we had was special. Please, like, I want you back in my life. And I'm like, no, like, swerve. Like, F off. Like, I want nothing to do with you. You're a scumbag. You got me into so much drama, and you got me be up and I didn't even do anything. You were the one that lied and cheated and did all this manipulating stuff to both of us and like no get out of here. So months go by uh, my friend Sarah obviously she was informed on all of this stuff because she was my best friend. I told her everything. So there was a Halloween party for the school one night and I lied to my mom and told her that I was going to Sarah's house and Sarah lied to her parents and said that she was coming to my house for the night. I finally caved in and told him I would give him a second chance that there would be like no funny business or anything. Just wanted to come over and hang out. He said there were a couple of people there. There was going to be drinks and just wanted to have a good time and he just wanted to see me. Uh, my friend Sarah 
like I said, she was a virgin. She didn't drink. She didn't smoke weed. She was a very good girl. I was like, listen, you need to keep me in check tonight because I knew I was going to drink. I was like, you need to make sure I do not drink too much. You need to make sure I don't do anything stupid and sleep with him. You just need to keep me in control, girl. Like, listen, keep me in check. Because, you know, once star drinks going in, you just become a completely different person. We get there. I forget what we were drinking. We were drinking something really strong, though. I remember it was a whiskey. And they gave me, like, a cup that was, like, this big. And they filled it, like, that much. So, me hanging out with all of these older kids who are drinking... I assumed they wanted me to chug this whole cup of whiskey. I sat there and I straight chugged it. And when I was done, all of a sudden, Sam looks at me and he goes, did you just drink all of that? And I was like, yeah, isn't that what I was supposed to do? And he goes, no, you were just supposed to sip on it. He's like, you're going to be effed up in like... 10 seconds. I ended up at the toilet all night, literally puking. I sat in his bathtub, um, smoking cigarettes. I, I was, I was a bad child. Like, I really was. I sat in his bathtub, smoking cigarettes, puking in the toilet, literally nonstop. My friend Sarah, of course, was a great friend. She stayed in the bathroom with me all night, holding back my hair. And, you know, I would go in and out of phases where I would feel fine and I'd start laughing and me and her would be telling jokes together in the bathroom while the rest of the party's out. Me and her were literally locked in the bathroom alone together for like four hours while I was just puking, chain smoking, like cigarette after cigarette. I think I actually peed in his tub that night, but I don't think I ever told him that, so... <laughs> surprise so he had a very small bed it was like a twin size bed you know tiny enough space for like one person to sleep on if you really want to cram it two people can sleep on it but he also had a couch in his bedroom so me and Sam were gonna sleep on the bed together and Sarah was going to sleep on the couch. Everyone leaves that was there besides, obviously, me, Sam, and Sarah. I am so drunk, like, I can't function. Every time I would try walking out of the bedroom to, like, go hang out with everyone else, I'd have to run back into the bathroom and puke. So, once everyone left, he put a bucket next to the bed and laid me down, and I just completely passed out. So in the morning, I wake up. I obviously feel like complete shit. I'm like, oh my gosh, can I please take a shower? Sarah's sleeping on the couch. She woke up. Sam's sleeping next to me in the bed. I'm like, I really need a shower. Like, I feel disgusting. And he's like, oh yeah, like, help yourself, no problem. So I go to take a shower. He ends up coming into the bathroom while I'm in the shower and like sweet talks me and says all these things and how he's sad like I just passed out last night and I was in the bathroom puking and how sorry he was and yada yada yada. He ends up getting in the shower with me and you know obviously I don't have to tell you what happened when he got in the shower with me. We're in the shower for about an hour and a half. We get out and my friend Sarah knocks on the door. I told her everything, but I was kind of ashamed and embarrassed of myself that I caved in and slept with him. So I was like, hide in the shower. I'm going to open the door really quick and talk to her. So I open the door and she's like, uh, where's Sam? He's been gone for like two hours. And I'm like, oh, I have no idea. I was like, I'm done though. I'm going to be out in a second. That's that. I go back to school. Me and Sarah, you know, are still best friends, still tell each other everything. And I told her, actually, I was like, oh my God, like, I feel so stupid. Like, I slept with him. Like, when you were wondering where he was, he was in the shower with me. And I feel so stupid for it. So, me and her continue to be best friends telling each other everything. About eight months go by. Me and Sam are hanging out and he says he wants to come clean about something. And I'm like, okay, pretty much you've already like torn my heart out and like stomped on it a million times. There's nothing else you could really say that would like destroy me. So just say it. 
He said, that night you were passed out in the bed. Sarah was laying in the bed with you, cuddling with you. And I got in the bed and all three of us were laying there. And me and Sarah ended up having sex with you passed out drunk right there in the same bed. It's all right. Pick your job. I know. They didn't even have the audacity to do it on the couch in the bedroom. They didn't even have the audacity to do it in a different bedroom. They literally, on a twin-size bed, so clearly they were touching my body. I was just so drunk and passed out that I didn't budge. Like, I was just, I was knocked out. And they had sex in the same bed as me. Like, as, as I'm sleeping there, they had sex together. And she was a virgin. And then he slept with me the next morning. Do you have any morals? That is disgusting. You know, he slept with Sarah, whatever. But to have sex with me the next morning after you just had sex with my best friend while I was passed out in the bed, literally next to me, touching my body while you two are having sex. You have sex with me the next day. Like, literally, like, not even, like, 10 hours apart. My best friend and someone who had already screwed me over so much, so I already knew it was coming from him, like, my best friend and in the same fucking bed and then sex with me that next morning i could not believe it when he told me like i knew it would be bad but i didn't think it would be that bad the part that gets me the most is that it was in the same bed and it was a tiny bed so they're probably thrusting right against me but i handled it very well I told him, thank you for telling me the truth. Obviously, me and him had no connection after that, except for if we were at a party and he was there like a hi, bye type of thing. And I actually messaged my friend Sarah and said, how could you lie to me like that and do that to me and have sex with Sam? At first, she denied it. Then I said, you don't need to lie. Like, he's sitting right here with me. Like, I know what happened. And she instantly, she's like, I'm so sorry, Alexis. Like, you can beat me up. I won't even try to punch you back. She's like, you can just hit me as many times as you want. And I'm not even going to try to fight back. I'll just let you beat me up. I'm so, so sorry. And I was like, no, no. I was like, I am so angry at you, especially because you're my best friend. But... I, I would never hurt you. I'd never be able to hurt you because you're my best friend. And obviously me and her kind of went our separate ways after that. We still talked every once in a while in the halls at school if we had a class together. But it was definitely never the same after that. Messed up, I know. And this was years ago and I still get bitter over it because I'm like, how could you do that? And she was a virgin. You're going to let that scumbag be the guy that takes your virginity? But, you know, to each their own. I forgive, but I never forget. I'm over it now, obviously. Just, like, talking about it and, like, those memories coming back. Just, like, it hits a little nerve deep down. You know what I'm talking about? That's all the stories I can handle for today. I know it was only two. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more stories like this, because, trust me, I have plenty more that are just as bad or even worse. So if you liked this video, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed, please subscribe down below. Keep my unicorn flying high. My unicorn's actually way over there if you can see her. I am recording on my bed tonight because it is like 3 a.m. and I'm lazy and tired and didn't feel like going all the way over there two feet away from my bed 
And I thought I wanted to be all comfy in my bed and my pillows. And I wanted to show off some of my cute pillows. Look at this. I know Jesse and I aren't together anymore, but look at how cute this is. It's a picture of him and I, and it says, love is all you need. Like, we got this as a Christmas present from his mom. Like, how adorable. And it's on both sides. Like, so cute. Never get to show off my cute pillows, so. Especially this one, like, ugh. I just can never stop constantly playing with it. Anyways, like I said, if you guys liked this video, give this video a big thumbs up and I will be sure to make more videos like this. And if you guys have any horror stories like this, like dating horror stories, first date horror stories, like put them below. I seriously want to hear about them to make myself feel a little bit better. And just because it's, it's just fun, you know, us girls, guys sharing stories back and forth because shitty things happen. And you you know, at the end of the day, you just gotta laugh about it. Like, you can't just cry about it, you just gotta laugh about it. And that, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just, I'm just gonna laugh about it real quick. On all seriousness, like, it's only made me a better person. I'm gonna stop rambling because my video has only been so long because I ramble so much. But leave your comments below talking about bad experiences you've had with ex-boyfriends, current boyfriends, first dates, anything. Like, I want to hear it all. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and don't forget to stay true to you.